Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel where we're talking about the building and construction of my Lancer 360. If you're just following along for the first time, um, I hope you can tell that I've started to edit the videos and to make them more presentable. So we, where we pick up is the last time I did a video, I was working on the firewall forward of the UL520T and planning. And along the way, I decided I wanted custom seats to go with my Lancer, but they have to be lightweight. So I thought about what they should look like and ended up thinking that a set of Corvette seats would look really slick in the Lancer but they're way too heavy. So I've tried to figure out how I'm going to go about incorporating this into the design. And being an engineer, knowing CAD software, I decided to come up with a workflow uh, to arrive at some carbon fiber seats. And this is going to be kind of long and involved, but I'm gonna try to do a good job of explaining to you how you can create uh, custom products like this yourself. So I started with a couple of CAD models that I downloaded from the internet of the interior of a C8 Corvette. And I pulled that mesh data into a program called Blender, which is an open source CAD software package, and started figuring out how I'm going to create the parting lines for the front half and back half of the mold. So what you see me doing here is actually removing vertices uh, from the surface to separate the front plane from the back plane. Now Blender is a very uh, advanced product, but it has some powerful workflows in it. And I'm actually in mesh editing mode here where it allows you to do a lot of fine tuning. And I'm going to show more of this as we run through uh, quite a long video here in this making. But essentially, what I'm doing is cleaning up the mold or cleaning up the CAD model to remove portions that wouldn't be included in the back plane or the back half of the mold. Now, what you actually see here is me finishing up removing the headrest which is the cushion on the front. It's in the CAD model, but I don't need that uh, for doing the actual mold for the part. So after a whole lot of work that I really didn't show, you can see that I've ended up with the back half of the shell of the seat and applied a texture of carbon fiber uh, so you could see what it'll look like. Now this is actually the parting line for the back half of the seat, not the front. And I had to go through a similar workflow for the front side of the seat in order to uh, create the front half. And I'm still not quite done with the front half. But after all of this work, I still was able to import the uh, polygon mesh model, the same thing I was using in Blender, and pull it into SolidWorks and overlay it in the firewall forward with the fuselage template. Now, I put the seat in the middle so that when I do a parting line down the center of the CAD model, that it will allow me to see the seat back cushion position relative to the modeled person that's sitting in the cockpit. And as you can see, the, the seats from uh, Chevrolet have quite a large lumbar support, which is good for long distance flying, but it may be a little tight for the small cabin here. So there's also a bulkhead along the back wall that I have to contend with. So at some point, I'm going to have to incorporate uh, the seat into that bulkhead in the back. And if you pay close attention here, you can also tell that the seat is a little small. So after playing with it for a long time here in the uh, SolidWorks model, I'm just kind of eyeballing it to see how it fits uh, and what I need to do to scale it and size it in order to get it in the right position in order to maximize the 
uh, amount of leg room that you have because the airframe is kind of small. Uh, this plane has a pretty tight cockpit. It's only about 40 inches, well, 42 inches wide, I believe, um, which is pretty tight. So it's kind of like a small race car. And every inch of bolster that's behind the lumbar of the seat uh, takes up that much more room for your legs, which means you could end up sitting kind of uh, cramped if I don't plan this right. Now, the brake pedals or, or the rudder pedals, rudders and brakes, depending on how you uh, build them, can be uh, positioned forward and backward. They're kind of adjustable. Um, but what you can see here is the UL520T turbo engine and the firewall and this cross section that I mocked up of the uh, cabin area of the Lancer 360. And like I said, I'm just spinning the model around and thinking about it and planning it to try to figure out what kind of changes I'm going to have to incorporate. By this point, I've already figured out that the seat is not big enough. If you look closely now, you can see that the side bolsters are actually up in the uh, manic little model's uh, armpits. So it would be kind of hard to sit in this seat, right? Your arms would always be up. The back panel would work, I think, but uh, you can see the bulkhead now at the parting line behind the seat. So there's kind of a one inch thick uh, foam core bulkhead, but the, the one bar is not protruding far enough down. So now you can see how I'm starting to think I'm going to have to incorporate the seat into the bulkhead design in order to create enough uh, room in the cabin. Now, I, I kind of want to make these seats available for sale, possibly when I'm done. So I've really got a lot of planning to do here. As you can see, I slide the model down and realize, look how low the headrest is now. So now you can see that I've uh, mocked up the fuselage in order to give me a, kind of a better representation of the width of the cabin area of the cockpit. And I've gone through quite a bit of workflow here in order to create uh, cross sections at intervals across the CAD model. And with those, I'm going to do a um, loft function on the profiles uh, swept through the model and use guide curves in order to uh, cause it to follow the shape more closely. And as you can see, uh, it does a very good job of kind of creating this. Now, I did this because the cabin area uh, bulges out quite a bit in this area. And that's important because it provides more room for the seat bolsters. So I'm kind of mocking it up now to just look like the actual models do or the, the kits do because a lot of them have kind of turned this darker uh, kind of mustardy brown color just from age and uh, just kind of toying with it at this point. But now that I've created this lofted model, you can see that uh, this really is from the firewall to kind of behind the bulkhead. And now I'm going to use another function inside of SolidWorks in order to thicken the surface uh, like it would actually be constructed with the uh, Divinicel core. And the end result will be uh, an approximation. I didn't actually mock up the fiberglass on the outside and then the core in the middle. Instead, I just made it all a solid block because this is not really for structural work. This is just so that I can do planning of the CAD model. Now, one of the problems in doing this kind of work is that sometimes you just don't know what's gonna happen. And there you saw me having to clean up the front edge because the thickening created some kind of artifact that wasn't flush fitting. And now that I've uh, finished up the, the design, I'm able to pull it up flush with the firewall, which is exactly how this, the kit is built, um, I believe. It might be inset slightly, but I'll address that at a later date. 
uh, <clears throat> but I've re-imported the uh, engine model now. So now we have a proper width fuselage. Uh, and I only did the lower half because, like I said, at this point, I'm planning for just the seats. And uh, now you can see also that uh, I've added an intercooler because the engine is turbocharged and intercooled. But it will take me some time uh, to position that because I don't have a model yet of the cowling uh, in order to properly align it. I do know that the engine has to be canted down and to the right one degree each um, in order to be properly mounted. So wrapping up the design here, you can see I've got everything in place and I've actually increased the size of the seats slightly, but I'm still toying with it, trying to figure out how big they truly need to be in order to um, accommodate, you know, an actual sized human. And I realized that the sides actually bulge in down at the bottom, which is a good thing, because it means that I'm going to be able to uh, have those bolsters stick out. It's probably going to end up being pretty tight, uh, I might have to modify the outer bolster slightly so that they don't crush up against the inside of the fuselage. But ultimately, what matters is that I end up with uh, something that's comfortable, <clears throat> which might even include that I physically make uh, cardboard models of these just to gauge the uh, angle of the rake back and the depth of the uh, side bolsters in position to see how they're going to feel uh, when you sit in this seat. So ultimately, one of the complaints that many people that own these planes uh, is, is that the seats are just not very comfortable for long distance flying. <clears throat> now, I'm hoping that as a result of this, I'm going to be able to include lumbar support and make these seats actually truly comfortable to sit in. Um, it's going to take some additional work, but the reason all of this is being done at the end of the day is because one, I want the custom look, uh, but also in order to create a seat that looks anything like this for an airplane, it's got to be lightweight. And I've addressed that by building the uh, front and back halves of the seat mold out of carbon fiber. So the next step after I get these all finished up will be to convert them into surface models so that I can then create uh, a mold half and a parting line for the two halves, just like you've seen with any kind of fiberglass or carbon fiber parts where they're vacuum bagged. Um, and as a result, I'll be able to create a front half in a back half of the seats out of carbon fiber and uh, maybe some Devenacell core uh, for stiffness in certain areas and uh, hopefully keep the weight down. So I'd like to see these seats come in at something like uh, three to four pounds a piece. Uh, that would be without seat cushions, of course, but just the carbon fiber, which is not unrealistic not including the bottom, I suppose, but I don't think it's unrealistic for the uh, seat backs uh, to just weigh a couple of pounds. Carbon fiber is extremely lightweight and also extremely stiff and strong. Um, and I think that this also bodes well for the uh, multi-point harnesses seat belt design uh, because they can go through the openings in the seat back that you can see from this position. So as we continue to go through the workflow, I'm just kind of repositioning the seats now that I've scaled them up, not only to make sure they don't bump into each other, but also that the side bolsters on the outside on both halves actually still fits into the fuselage. I'm really trying hard to avoid uh, having to modify the bolster at all, but also trying to make sure that the seat is tall enough uh, for a person to sit in. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video. Uh, the next one, I'll probably have the seats with colored headrests 
and I'm closing with a, a rendering. Hope you enjoyed the video. Oh yeah, and before I go, uh, one last thing. If you recall, I bought a Mark II carbon fiber tail, which was made for the Lancer 360, and it's a hot upgrade. Unfortunately, or fortunately actually, I'm going to be going to pick this sucker up in Alicante, Spain next week from my new friend Jose Luis Romero, who flies in Spain and with a long easy. So this will be an exciting trip. Look for the updates. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.